I put messages in a bottle and I let them go to sea. Right. And I started in 1996. I've got close to 7,000 bottles on now. Wow. And I got probably over 4,000 replies back. Matter of fact, I got one back today from New Brunswick. I let it go in 2008. How often do you go out? Do you go out? Every time the wind is west. Okay. Because it's already off from land. Cool. Like I started in April whenever the sea ice left and up to date right now, it's only a little better than a month. I got 288 going. Going to the beach at 5 o'clock in the morning. It was in September. It was blowing west of it. 60 mile an hour. Go down to the beach at 5 o'clock. I come back up for dinner. For an hour only to walk maybe 100 feet. Back down after dinner and supper, go back up for an hour for supper, and I'll back down at 11 o'clock that late. I'll let 388 bottles go. And I don't throw them all at once. Uh, I just toss one and then it goes out until it gets inside, you can't see no more. Then I'll walk down the beach a little further and let another one go. Just back and forth, so they have one all that in the same spot. What do the notes say? I don't have any made up right now, but it might be one around here that I got somebody, some sends them back. There's all, all fax paper, fluorescent, mm -hmm. five different covers. There's got to be one around here somewhere. The other one right here. Not just part of one. Ah, cool. I get all winter to gather bottles up. Like mm -hmm. coming over this morning, they're down. I bought a hundred electrical tape, and then I just take them across there and they write them all out like that. Mm -hmm. And they leave the blank open for the date. I just put the date in with a marker. Mm -hmm. I saw them when I throw them sometimes, blowing hard. They hit the water from on top of the beat, on top of the cake. And when they hit the water, they'll bounce, and the wind will take them at least from here to over to where your guys are there, where it hit the water again in the air. Oh, I had a, a, a lot of box with Arla. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was writing to a guy there for about seven years there. He was a sheep farmer. He stood on a little island called the Blue Hole. And uh, he had to stop writing to me because it was costing $16 to make a letter <laughs> at the last. The only way you get there is by boat. I had a lot to go to Germany, all, all over like South Africa, Russia, Alaska. And I had one landed a half a mile from the Golden Gate Bridge, Sylvester Stallone found it. Wow. He wrote to me. Kind of a, I don't know, it's a, when mom was alive, it was more interesting, eh? Like, she used to get the letters, she'd come in and say, you got another letter today? And, I saw myself getting as high as 11 letters in one day, back from like 11 different people. Like. And there's people that found, like say, three of my bottles, three messages, in within a radius maybe of a mile, of, mile apart, and one could be 2004, one could be 2007, and one 2009. And then a lot, a lot of people, all the fish from here right down, even pretty near the other end of the island, and when you see the bottles up to sea floating sometimes in the current, they know it's mine, they just pick it up and let it go again. I had one one time that was five different people into it, at five different hands. They put their note in, they let it go, they put their note in, let it go. And the first place it landed was in Germany, and it ended up in Newfoundland. One fellow one day was moose hunting over there, and he not allowed to moose hunt on a Sunday. So he took a walk on the beach. There's a great big hollow log there, three feet in diameter, so he just looked in for fun, and he could see something away in there, pink. Couldn't very old do it, so we went back to camp and he got his saw and he cut where he thought it was the glue. It was one of my bottles and it was that was large on the beach and uh, it was eight gone for eight years. Yeah, he said it was about six to eight feet in. And and another guy was cutting a place for his house fifty feet from the shoreline. He's cutting the trees down when he cut the branches off and there was a bottle in underneath there. And that was there for eleven years. What, what's the longest uh, spread that you ever had between when you let a bottle go and... 15. 15 years? Yeah. Yeah, 14, 15, a lot of them, 12, 14. Especially the ones that goes to Ireland and Germany. The bottle missing for four years, found in an underground grotto cave by two women. Natalie and Edith. <laughs> oh, well, then. years that one was gone. What gave you the original idea to start doing this? I just had one day with a cousin of mine fishing tuna. Mm -hmm. 
The back end was just uh, glass Pepsi bottles, eh? Yeah. I was just sitting there, you could sit there and wait for a tone to wait, right? So I was sitting there in the chair by the wheel and I just put on whoever finds this bottle, please read back to her, like it, my address. That was in September. I think it was December, I got a message back from Emily Nunn. A lot of people around there said, how come you don't put your phone number on? I said, all, all I'll get is a phone call from a guy on a bottle, maybe in Germany, and that's it. Well, how am I going to prove it? Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't. They, they write to me. It feels good. Yeah. I'm not going to stop either. Like everybody said, how long are you going to go? I said, until I can walk to the beach, I can move around. Of course, I got a showcase down in Cavendish and Ripley's, believe it or not, now since 2003. Hopefully in 2014, I'm going in again and spoke about records. Does the media attention mean anything, really mean anything to you, or is it just all kind of about the letters? Eh, I don't know. It's, some people figure it's just, just, I just do, I don't know, like, I just, <laughs> you know, I get a story in or something happens, like, on the news. There's a lot of good comments, but there's a lot of bad ones, too. <laughs> Does anybody ever give you any, any, any trouble for it? And no, there was a guy down at the other end of the island here uh, four years ago. He kept reading about me in the papers, reading the papers and TV, so he decided to uh, try to sell it. So he got 200 bottles right and he put his address in them. And he went to the beach one evening, he fired a whole bunch of them over at once, right? And he didn't know like that the wind had to be off land. So next morning the, the environment came along and he found them all on the beach and he picked them up and he charged them. Well, there was a big upgrade about that on TV and every compass and in the paper, but it, he said, if I hack, can get away. Then I had about, I think it was around over 4,000 bottles gone. Then he said, if I hack, can let over 4,000 bottles go into the ocean. You charge him. He said, you have no reason to charge me. So then the environment, the environment had called me and they had told me and they said, uh, not to worry because your bottles are one by one, most of them being picked up, and we never had one complaint over the world anywhere about it. And he went to court and he got a $500 fine. So then he had a big piece in the paper about me there, you know, figuring it would be charged in the graphics. So one day he's phone number, wanting comments. Eh? So I called him up one evening. He didn't know who I was. I said, What do you think of that guy here? I like it. Just letting all the bottles go. I mentioned a bottle. He said, That guy said, should be killed. He said, Really? I said, Yeah. Why? What's he doing wrong? He's polluting the world with bottles, he said. He said, He shouldn't be doing that. Well, I said, You polluted all one shore. I said, You got caught and you got charged. He said, He should be charged too. I said, oh yeah? So then I said, why do you figure he should be charged? I said, I think he's doing a good thing. I don't think so. And you think he's doing a good thing? I said, yes, I think he is. Why do you figure that? I said, because I'm Harold Haggard. <laughs> <laughs> Click, hung up the phone. <laughs> the only thing, I used to let some go with helium, the big balloons. Mm -hmm. And they called me one day and they told me that I had to stop it because uh, when the balloons land somewhere, there's still helium in the balloon. And what happens, cattle eat it or sheep or anything, and it'll kill them. Mm -hmm. So I stopped it. I let five go. One ended up in uh, gold mi uh, coal mines in Nova Scotia, and one ended up in South America. A lady from Toronto, a model. It's a tourist there one day, and she stopped. And that's the front of the boat. I said, I love your car. It's beautiful. Who done the masterpiece? I said, I done it myself. I said, just started from the middle of the engine bonders, kept making designs. Yeah. <laughs> so she said, uh, what's the meaning of save a horse, ride the bottom of that? I said, you can ride me. I said, I'll get down on all fours and you get on my back and ride me instead of a horse. <laughs> and she, she couldn't understand what I was talking about. It. I'm going to take another spell there now sometime or later on. I'm going to do some more to it there, get some other designs. I cut every one of those stars up by hand. Uh -huh. yeah, everything's on there, I've done by hand. I never wrote, just take my time. I love doing that.